Lawrence Fox was justified in criticising her ideas, but I think we can all agree that, you know, when he's commenting on her shag ability, it actually devalued the point he was trying to make. And I know he's apologised for that, but I can understand why he stood by the sentiment. Yeah, well said. Um, well, as you said, he, he's admitted it was in poor taste. In previous times, Catherine, that would have been the end of it. I mean, why can't... If he's admitted it's in poor taste, we all agree or disagree on whether Ava, Ava Evans' uh, opinions are valid, can we just move on? <laughs> you know, why can't it just be the end of it? Why does someone have to lose their job over this? Well, isn't it interesting that it's GB News that have cancelled Fox and Wharton? I mean, they've positioned their se themselves as the platform for free speech in Great Britain and they've been highly successful. And yet here they are and they've fallen at the first hurdle uh, and cancelled these men who, who have apologised. And of course, Ava has gone off. She's uh, gained several thousand new followers. She's gone off to the BBC and was moaning about how she was a, a vehicle for content. Um, so she's benefited. And these men have uh, effectively, you know, blown up their careers. And from what I can see about the comments that she makes, she just appears to me to be a third wave liberal feminist who sees everything through the prism of either being a the oppressed or the oppressor. So we've lost these two commentators who add a lot of value to the discourse. And then here we've got Ava, who just seems to have made a career out of uh, criticising men and complaining about the lot of women without actually adding a whole lot of substance. Well, yeah, well, I mean, to that point about the criticism she has of men, there are worse things said every day on broadcasters and especially on social media. Um, but generally, the ones that the people that get away with it are from the left talking about conservatives. Uh, are we being paranoid or is there a double standard here? I think you're right there, Fred. I think there is a, a bit of a double standard here at play. And look, I, I don't disagree that Wooden and Fox should have been reprimanded. Uh, they should have apologised. Maybe they should have stood down and have a holiday for a couple of weeks, let it blow over. But I think actually firing them, well, GB News is showing that, you know, the point of difference that they've tried to establish, they've just lost all that social capital by playing the game of the leftist progressives who are quite willing to cancel anybody for the slightest change. Transgression. Yeah, well, as you said, they've but they 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 suspended those three presenters. There's another factor here, Catherine, because Ofcom immediately announced it was going to look into this instance. Uh, Ofcom, of course, is the British broadcasting regulator. Now, it's fair to say that GB News is afraid of receiving a negative judgment from Ofcom because Ofcom has a lot of power. Now, the same might apply here soon, Catherine, because the federal government is planning to introduce a bill this year which will empower the Australian Communications and Media Authority, the Australian equivalent of Ofcom, to determine what is mis- and disinformation on shows like this one, as well as anything published by Australians online. Now, are governments of liberal democracies becoming too, <laughs> I'm reluctant to use this word, Catherine, but I have to, are governments of liberal democracies becoming too Nazi these days? Well, they're certainly becoming way too authoritarian. Uh, we know that the cornerstone of democracy is freedom of speech. And with ACMA, you know, being invested with all this power to determine, you know, what is truth, um, I mean, it's like we're stepping into 1984 and I don't think it should be up to the government. This seems to me like gross state overreach. It should be up to the people. People should be free to say whatever they like, in my view, provided they're not directly inciting violence. I will definitely draw the line there. Um, you know, not really a fan of profanity either. I think that would devalue your argument. But I think that we should be able to say what we like because who are the people, who are the arbiters behind the scenes saying what we can and cannot say. I think we're getting into very, very dangerous territory when we allow a government organisation with faceless bureaucrats to determine what is the truth and what is not. The underlying sentiment of all this, Catherine, is that the government can't trust the people to think for themselves. That's essentially what they're saying, isn't it? 
It seems to be. I mean, there's a whole lot of arguments going on, a whole lot of issues uh, where the government just keeps force feeding us uh, what their narrative is. And if people stand up and disagree, I mean, they're facing loss of livelihood, uh, particularly in the issue for which I became known. Uh, people are being dragged through quasi-judicial processes. They're being charged with, um, with crimes. They're being dragged off to jail. I mean, th this is really alarming. It's authoritarianism, it's totalitarianism, and I certainly did not expect to see it here in Australia in the 21st century. 